Hi folks, it's Nate Picos of Blambot. Happy New Year. Um, today I thought we'd talk about doing some creative styles of balloons. And in this case, we'll go over robotic and telepathic. So let me open up uh, Illustrator here, this document that I've got going. And before we move into the nuts and bolts of this, I want to say that you should always keep it simple. Um, if you're starting a new style guide for a project, you know, you never know how many times a, a character with a special balloon is going to reappear. And you want to keep it simple because if you do these really elaborate ones, it'll just bog you down. Unless it can be saved as an action key, um, you know, I would avoid them. So this top row is the more simple. Let's, let's, for, let's go over robotic balloons first. This top row are what I would do nine out of ten times for a comic. They're simple. Um, they're not going to compete with the artwork. They're going to get the point across, and you're going to get in and out quickly. This bottom row, um, mostly stuff that I would use for maybe, you know, a robotic bad guy who appears at the end of the issue that the, bad, the good guys have to fight. And he's only got two or three lines of dialogue, and it's not something I'm going to have to replicate over and over and over again. So let's go up here. We've got this, which is basically just your, your standard balloon. Let me uh, let me lock my lettering later. So, and I'm gonna um, break this apart so you can see the pieces of it here. It's basically just your you know here's your standard balloon with these fiddly pointy bits on it, which over the years I've made and saved it to my template. It's just these two right here, um, and you just put them where you need them, and you hit compound path. In my case, I've got Compound Path as an action key, so I don't have to dig through my menus anymore. But it's in the Pathfinder palette down here. And it's just a, a radio balloon tail, which um, I went over also in a previous video. And font choice you know, matters too. You've got a robotic character, and you want a robotic font. So this is voice activated from my uh, collection. So let's move on over here. This is even simpler. It's basically, it's, you know, it's just a rectangle with a lightning bolt tail. And, you know, this may look overly simple, but you're competing with artwork, and it's something you've got to do over and over again. And it doesn't look bad. It just looks simple, and it works. So this is something I would do all the time, too. Moving on over here, we've got uh, a rounded rectangle, which is just, if you go to the, the rectangle menu over here, the flyout, rounded rectangles right there and you can just you know you make rounded rectangles and these corner radiuses I think oh yeah in my I keep them 0 0.06 so no matter what size you know rounded rectangle I make these corner radiuses are consistent I think that's important too for consistency's sake uh, this one's got kind of a weird tail on it um, I got hired to do this the several spin-off series of Black Hammer and Todd Klein lettered the original series so I had to emulate some of what he was doing to try to keep it consistent across books and he did these sort of simpler sort of almost deconstructed radio balloon tails and I kind of like them I've started doing them kind of regularly they're fun you know you just go to your pen tool and just make points you know and th this is just a matter of practice you'll get good at doing these after you've done you know 50 or 60 of them so let's move on to the to the weird, complicated ones. This here, uh, probably the most complicated of, of this line of balloons. These are basically just regular, you know, ellipses. Uh, to make an ellipse, you just go to L on your keyboard. Let me uh, let me get back to a default. Let me just use my eyedropper here. Bear with me. Okay, so you've got just an ellipse, right? Basically, you want to add, if you go to strokes, you can see there's a check mark thing right here for dash line. You give it a dash line, and it gives you the option over here to adjust the lengths of the dashes and the gaps between them. So if you just sort of get random with it, like 12.6 point, point, three point, or whatever, um, it sort of gives it this random dashed look. And then you can just do offset path, which... Um, I have a, I have keyboard shortcuts for offset path. I mean action keys, 
but I think it's object path. Yeah. Where is it? Am I just not seeing it? Offset path right there. I'm over it. Jeez. It's been a long day. Um, so you just do offset path and it would bring up this menu and you can adjust here how big you want the offset. Um, on mine, I think you just use one of my keys, you know, it's just like that. And you can drop different colors in and you can make the fill, you know, a different color, the strokes, you can just switch to the stroke here, come up here and, you know, make it a dark purple, whatever you want to do. It's, it's just that. And I think this example up here, my, my stroke thickness is pretty thick. So over here, it's like 1.5 or something. Yeah, something like that. So you get the idea of how that's built and with just, you know, a radio tail. Uh, over here, these are just, it's just a rounded rectangle like we did above. Oops. You know with a fill and a different stroke fill and then another offset path you know outside that with a different color none of this stuff is 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 hard to do and these steps maybe look like I'm doing them quickly but keep in mind that you, you might have to do this you know 30 or 40 times in a book and it adds up and down here we've got the simplest one of all here. Let me just break this apart. Here's, we have these other points that are just more fiddly bits that we can stick on, grab everything and, um, you know, put them together. And this is just has a, a color in it. If you want to, that's another easy way to differentiate some of these things. You can just fill them with a light color or even a dark color. If you want to do a dark color, um, let's say, let's do a real dark purple and unlock my lettering layer and make that a lighter purple you know you can do that and a lot of times I make the stroke the same color um, as whatever the color of the dialogue is so you could do something like that alright so let's move on to telepathic balloons here is my go-to telepathic balloon um, it's basically just a thought balloon you know if you've got thought balloons saved in your template you just pull one of these out and this, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got this idea from 80s era Claremont uh, X-Men lettered by Tom Ors. And you just add these, more of these details. And these, are, you know, you can see them up here. On, I've saved in my template right here. And th these are basically just, these are just line segments with this white object that I've drawn behind it so that no matter what artwork this telepathic balloon is against, it will show up. Because if you just had these line segments with nothing behind it, uh, it would get lost in the inks. And let me show you how that looks. Let me just drop a, a colored rectangle uh, back here so you could see it on some color. Hey, there we go. Um, you know, so you see how these, these points show up better with that white behind them? So moving on, this is just um, drawn with the pencil tool. It's just two irregular sort of ovoid shapes um, with different stroke. Let me zoom in here. You can see that one stroke is thicker than the other, right? And the, the, the smaller thickness stroke object is clear. So if I were to drop uh, you know a color behind here well, that's a terrible color for this let me uh, there we go so you can see that the main balloon has a white fill and this the other squiggly line one uh, doesn't so it kind of makes an interesting pattern it shows up on the artwork pretty cool and you can just draw these with the pencil tool and save them um, I think I have some saved here we go. I have a bunch of them saved right there. And that's that's a fairly easy one. This last one here is is ridiculously complicated, but it's fun and I thought I'd show you. 
Hey folks, uh, sorry about the edit there. I had a little Adobe Illustrator malfunction right in the middle of recording. Awesome, right? So here we are uh, again on this last balloon. And this is the, this one, uh, this one is complicated. Um, I saw something like this used in a DC comic and I thought it would be cool to figure out how they did it. And basically it uses some of the techniques I talked about for earlier balloons. But basically, this is just a, a wiggly balloon. Let me lock my lettering layer here. Um, with a bunch of offset path objects to make it you know, wider and wider and wider here. And then you've got strokes, I mean, um, dashes, just like we talked about before, and sort of at sort of random intervals and sizes to make it look sort of a little chaotic and different stroke thicknesses, which you adjust right here and, and weight. And then a color added. Um, and some of these have fills and some of them don't. Let me drop a background on it to show you. Um, I'll fill that with gray. Darker gray, there we go. So that's how that would, you know, if you've got different colors going on in the background that's how that would look you can see this one here is the one that has the white fill then there are two on the inside that don't and two on the outside that don't but the thicknesses are sort of randomized but this is a pain in the butt to do if you've got to do it over and over and over again so the only way I would recommend setting up something like this is to record each step as you do it as an action key which uh, again I I think I made a video about that in the past but let me show you what it looks like when I use the action key. You know, you just grab one of these wiggly balloons. And in my case, it's F5, but you'll kind of see a quick rundown of the steps of it. See that? And then you can just make, you know, you make them any color you want if you switch to the stroke. You know, come up here and maybe make them blue or whatever. Something like that. But again, you don't want to have to do all these strokes and, and uh, colors and dashed lines over and over and over again throughout a book. So that's, um, that's part one. I think maybe we'll do monster balloons next time. Some ideas for those. Um, so I will see you then. Take care. Thanks for watching.